Earlier this year, while wrapping up our series, Making Optics and Telescopes, I started our practical sub-series by showing how to construct a telescope out of basic surplus store supplies for under $45. Over cloudy skies left me unable to demonstrate its quality, and I promised a follow-up video of it later. That ended up getting pushed to the back burner and mostly forgotten about for the most part as we moved on to new topics. But earlier this week was a rare astronomical event that I've been making plans to see for the past four years, a total solar eclipse. I figured this would be a great time to bring my copy scope with and try it out where I was headed in central Oregon. Between initially cloudy forecast and nearby forest fires, we were fortunate to actually wind up with a clear view of the event. Mounting the scope with a high-tech method of duct tape, and wearing my eclipse glasses as a filter, I was actually able to get a really nice magnified view of the first phase of the eclipse, and could even take photos through it with my phone. Compared to using it without, it offered a much closer view. Its magnification isn't the greatest. My early attempts trying it out showed that it wasn't powerful enough to view things like the moons of Jupiter, but it does offer the equivalent of a good pair of binoculars. As the eclipse started to reach totality, there was a strange experience of the midday sun getting darker and darker, but it was also becoming noticeably cooler. Right before totality, the light of the sun became kind of wispy, when only the light from the very edge of the sun was coming through. It looked like there was dust being blown around with the wind, creating a swirling pattern, even though there was none. I tried to capture it with my camera, but I'm not sure how well it shows. As the eclipse finally reached totality, I wasn't sure what to expect as, without the glasses to look at the sun, I would hardly even notice the difference. But as it happened, it was an intense, real experience of it suddenly turning to near night. The edge of the sky in every direction looked like dusk, and in the sky was a glowing outer ring of the eclipse sun. I didn't use a copy scope during the actual eclipse though, as it's something that's better observed with the naked eye. In a brief minute and a half, it was over, and it quickly returned back to day. Overall, the copy scope was a nice tool to have to get a closer look. Its functionality was a bit challenged by its difficulty to line and focus, mostly owing to my cheap tripod I duct taped it to. Definitely a fun project for its price, but still nothing strong enough to see Jupiter's moon. So perfecting clear glass from my original telescope is definitely going to be an ongoing project I'll be slowly perfecting. As for the eclipse itself, it was definitely an amazing experience. Definitely glad I had the chance to see it. This week wasn't amazing enough. We found out Tuesday that our channel has been nominated for a Streamy Award. We're in the science and education category, along with our friend Grant Thompson, Veritasium Vsauce in his series Minefield, and MKBHD. We feel really privileged to be listed alongside these guys, especially since they have way more followers than we do and have been uploading for far longer than us. I'm gonna try and head to Los Angeles and you can hopefully see me along with your other favorite YouTubers at the show as it's live streamed on Twitter, Tuesday, September 26th at 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 Pacific. So wish us luck and thanks to you for watching our channel. If you haven't yet, please subscribe so you maybe hit the 400,000 subscriber mark before the awards.